So let's talk about the China's uh, genocide against Uyghurs. So we'll talk about who are the Uyghurs and why China is committing this genocide, oppressing Uyghurs, and then Uyghur life before this genocide and also the life inside the camp and outside the camp in our homeland and uh, what actions uh, have been taken so far and also uh, what can we do as a uh, community member, as a you know, person. So, uh, who are the Uyghurs? Uyghurs are uh, Turkic and Muslim uh, people that are native to uh, Central Asia. Uh, we call our homeland East Turkestan. Uh, however, China calls it Xinjiang. We reject that name because it means new territory that was invaded. Uh, Uyghurs have more than 20, uh, 20, 2,000 years sorry, of uh, history, rich history. We had our own independence. Uh, we lived independently for years. We had prosperous states. Um, however, once we were in, uh, invaded and occupied in 1949, uh, Uyghurs uh, gave up their arms. Uh, our lands, our properties were taken, uh, confiscated, and uh, the population of Han Chinese back then 1950s were 6%, and it increased more than 50 now with the migration. Why China is committing this genocide and crimes against humanity to Uyghurs? Its first reason is the Chinese Communist Party, they cannot tolerate uh, diversity. They want, uh, especially once the Xi Jinping became a president and general secretary, uh, he wants one homogeneous Han Chinese uh, population in China. Uh, we were independent in the past, lived freely, and starting 1990s when Soviet Union uh, separated, that's when China got a little more scared and wanted to get firm grip of this land because they know, you know, they were never owned that land. It was not the, their land. It was occupied. So CCP wanted to control the region. Uh, also, our land is such a, in a geopolitical and economic uh, uh, important for Chinese ambitions. So basically it is, it connects China to Euro-Asia for their trades, for their economic uh, uh, ambitions. So our geopolitical uh, land is very important for them. They had to co have a strong control. And East Turkestan is very rich with uh, minerals, you know, resources, oil and all those and that China doesn't, you know, want to give up. Uh, also for China's big population, it's a size of Alaska, if you think about it, and they would like to resolve those population problems as well by migrating Chinese, Han Chinese to our region. Uh, as you see in the map, um, it's very important where our homeland stays, and that's why China, you know, had wanted to have a strong, firm grip, uh, control over this land. Oppression before the genocide uh, was still there. Um, once we were occupied, uh, slowly assimilation were, you know, uh, taking place. So forced abortion, uh, restriction on Uyghur language in our school, a restriction on Uyghur names that on, and the Muslim names were banned, Turkic names were banned. For example, like Mohammed or Fatma, uh, they're banned. We cannot name our children with those uh, Islamic names. Uh, also restrictions on practice of religion, any, you know, practices like fasting or praying uh, also not allowed for the community uh, for the Uyghurs and also separation from the Turkic and Muslim root so Xi Jinping himself wrote you know rewrote basically the history and trying to disconnect us from our root from our Turkic root from our Islamic like religion uh, rooted uh, and the forced relocation of Uyghurs especially the girls to inner China, that was also going on before the camp started. Um, before I talk about the camp, let me give you a little background information about how this has started. Starting 2016, we got disconnected from our loved ones. So there was no internet, like communication, no phone calls. They weren't uh, answering us uh, because they were getting... Um, punished, basically, for communicating someone overseas. Uh, 
after the disconnection we didn't know what was going on and then uh s slowly our scholars our doctors our professors writers basically the backbone of our society were taken and detained uh at the beginning china was denying but once the uh, canadian researchers showed the satellite image of uh, those camps then china said oh those are vocational training camps those are schools we educating reeducating uyghurs and teaching them chinese and things like that uh and uh we were worried what has what was going on there once uh, there were some camp survivors like you see today uh, they were able to escape because their husbands uh, were are um, Kazakhstan citizen, Pakistan citizen or Egyptian. So uh, they were able to, you know, advocate and get them out, basically help them to escape. And then we heard stories, uh, uh, personal testimonies about what is going on inside the camp. So uh, political indoctrination uh, in those camps, there are torture, sterilization, the rape, forced labor, organ harvesting, separation of family and children. So kids were separated from their parents. Uh, also, you know, the, their identity and language and culture and religion were stripped away. Uh, also, they were using Uyghurs in the camp as a testing zone, like a guinea pig, for their medicines or their technological tool. As you see on the photos on the top one, that is at the airport on the, uh, on the floor that says fast lane for organs. So I want to talk about a little bit that I said for organ arresting. On those camps, before those detainees enter, they have full body, biological body scans, so x-rays, DNA checks, blood samples. So very, China used very expensive machines, tools to get those data, and they have a, this one big database. And then they're ready to match your DNA if you need a kidney, if you need a heart, in 48 hours to a couple days, they can tell you we have someone that matches. And those are the Uyghurs in the camps, live people. Uh, unfortunately, they even uh, uh, advertise halal organs to Arabic or Muslim countries that saying because Uyghurs are Muslim, they don't mostly they don't drink alcohol and they don't eat pork. They look at it like those, those organs are halal and they basically market that to the Islamic countries. And that's why in what country you need a fast lane at the airport for organs, that shows the intensity, the level of uh, organ arresting going on that we don't have uh, exactly uh, evidence to show this person did this because everyone is very afraid to speak up. Uh, but that's the level of uh, the scary stories going on in those camps. Very, very, very small camps, as you see, those uh, wooden table, as you see, they eat there, they study there, they sleep there, and that one small room, so many people crowded, and their bathroom is that corner blue bucket. Everything is watched 24-7, lights are on, there are cameras everywhere, and they learn Xi Jinping's uh, codes, they learn political indoctrination, uh, CCP's propagandas in those camps. Uh, this is a Dapen, uh, Dawanchen, um camp that in 2015 there were, you know, as you see, it was like a mountain. And 2018, um, CCP built a big camp, concentration camp there that can hold 70,000 people. This is just the one camp, and we know there are more than 570, I believe, camps in East Turkestan. Uh, life, life outside the camp. So we talked about, you know, what people go through in, inside the camps. And outside is not big different, actually. It's basically like a living in the open air prison. 24-7, there are cameras on the street. You're being watched. You're monitored. Everything you do is recorded. There is surveillance state, a forced sterilization also going on, forced abortion, a forced marriage. Um, unfortunately, uh, because of the one-child policy that China had s starting 1980s, um, China had, they were basically doing abortion for the girls to keep their last name longer, and there were so many men compared to the women, their population was imbalanced, so they need more brides. And that was a solution by the Communist Party, the state uh, 
run these incentives, these plans to, uh, if you marry Han Chinese, you know, you will get awarded, you know, this much of money, this much of help from government. And Uyghurs, Uyghur girls were forced to marry uh, the Chinese Communist Party's cadre. And if you don't, then you're being threatened that your parents might be taken to the concentration camp or if they're in the camp they might be killed so those girls they sacrifice their life marry someone who's not their religion marry someone who's not their uh, own nation own culture uh, just to save their family members uh, you see on the photos the girl's face you should be very happy on your wedding right uh, she, she is crying uh, that what she's going through uh, I can't imagine. So forced labor transfers to China, uh, also another big issue, according to Adrian Zen's uh, report, uh, 1.6 million Uyghurs were transferred from inside China to, uh, from East Turkestan to inner China. Elimination of identity, language, and culture and religion also going on outside. Uh, another important thing I left at the end is this, uh, the homestay uh, policy that China brought. They basically bring from Han Chinese, from the uh, government cadre, to your house. Imagine a stranger comes to your house, in your home, stays with you for months, and report everything you do. Are you praying? Are you, you know, using God's name? Are you saying something against the government? They report everything, document everything, and monitor everything, and tell the CCP. So that is very unacceptable that you even have to share your bed with them. And imagine some family, um, the fathers or the men of the family is taken to the concentration camp. Those men had to stay with the remaining part of the family. Uh, we talked about forced sterilization uh, again with Adrian Zen's report in AP, uh, Associated Press. The birth rate fell 60% from 2015 to 2018. And this is basically they're killing us, destroying us before even we are born, brothers. Uh, this is unbelievable uh, compared to, for example, Uzbeks are very close to us and their population was around 13 million in 1950s and 30 about 33 million now, uh, but according to Chinese uh, sources that Uyghurs were around 12 million and we say more than 3 million are in the camp. Uh, besides that, I talk about the children, right? I am a mother of two. Uh, when I heard about these camp, um, you know, concentration camps, I was wondering what is happening to the kids. Unfortunately, they are not given to grandparents most of the case. They are also taken to the kids' uh, state-run orphanages, uh, boarding schools, kindergartens, and stripped away from their identity, their religion, their culture, their language, and basically raised as a subject to CCP, subject, you know, it's like um, robotic machines that who doesn't know who they are. Uh, this is very sad and I'm worried about our future. Uh, we talked about forced labor earlier uh, and I wanted to expand it a little bit that so China using forced labor not just get uh, cheaper labor. It's also their uh, genocidal policy. When they transfer Uyghurs from East Turkestan to uh, um, especially Uyghur women, right, to inner China, they take those women at the age of, you know, giving a birth away. So they're away, they don't give birth, that way they can control the population. And if they have kids, they're separated, so they cannot pass it through, transfer their language, their culture, their religion to their kids. Also, kids were taken. So that's how they uh trying to achieve the homogeneous one Han Chinese, you know, nation by separating families from each other. Um, also, uh, other related to forced labor. So, 80% of the cotton of China comes out of our region because it's such a good quality and uh, fine threads. And 20% of the world's uh, cotton also comes out of China, and that is linked to Uyghur forced labor. Besides that, uh, the the polysilicon of the solar panels, uh, electronics, uh, auto parts, agriculture products such as like tomato, all those things use Uyghur forced labor that we need to be careful. Uh, at the U.S. passed the Forced Labor Prevention Act um, and it started to be implemented last year in July. So we are a little 
you know, better compared to other countries. However, China is using Canada or UK or other countries, European countries as a dumping ground now and they can't bring those products to US. They're still selling them to other countries. That's why we need to contact our com countries, our government, to let them know about this Uyghur forced labor issue. Um, Sorry, I keep going a little in details. So, uh, also we talked about our rich culture, um, our architecture, as you see on the uh, photos on the left here, uh, that we had beautiful, um, uh, the home, you know, decorations and houses built uh, based on Uyghur's culture. However, they were also destroyed under the name of, you know, it's too old or not, not safe and they were building new apartments and move Uyghurs. That's also part of cultural genocide. Um, so when it comes to Islam, not just Islam actually, any religion, China, CCP looks at it as a disease. It's like a cancer. It's threatening to them because when you have a faith you're stronger when you have a faith you have a community when you have a community you can be um, against to certain things you can stand up for injustice for example so they're very scared of that and they were continuing the by demolishing the mosques uh, around 60 percent of the mosques in East Turkestan were demolished and, or transformed into uh, hotels and restaurants and bars unfortunately uh, I, I wanted to get some of those uh, signs that were on the mosque so we cannot go pray at the mosque but even the people like old people who are allowed or who can go those are the things on the a wall as a regulations or rules the first one says azan and china rewrote basically the adan and it says you know come uh it's a little small i can see it now but come instead of only one word just say come pray the rest they change it to uh its own, it fits its own agenda. Uh, the second one says Tespi, so it's basically when you're using Tespi instead of Allahu Akbar, Subhanallah, or Alhamdulillah, um, they said you need to say, thank for uh, Communist Party, thank for Xi Jinping, you need to say that. Like these rules are on the mosque. Imagine how, what kind of, you know, uh, Islam that they are building in East Turkestan. And the last one is, as you see, the Qurans, the praying rocks, they were bur uh, they're burning those items because having Quran in your house, uh, praying outside, uh, all those things are banned. Those are reasons for you to be taken to the concentration camp. Um, transnational repression is uh, important for the Uyghurs who live outside China. Unfortunately, we deal with the survivor's guilt and also the China's long hand. When we want to speak up about the truth, China trying to hold our family member as a hostage back home and trying to control our act action here. So basically, I'll delete that uh, you know, tweet. Uh, don't give testimonies, that kind of threatening messages we get all the time. And this uh, guy on the uh, left, um, Yusuf Chan, was threatened to be spy, and when he didn't uh, agree, he, he was shot in Turkey. That's one example. Another way of China getting students back is basically when your passport expired, uh, the uh, embassy here or wherever you are, they don't uh, extend your passport and say you need to go back to homeland and get your passport expired there. When you go, you're arrested. Anyone who got education overseas, they are afraid and they they think you are a threat because you're open to democracy, you're open to religious freedom, you're open to uh, freedom of speech. And when you go back, they think you're going to spread those values to Chinese or the Uyghurs, and they're afraid of that, unfortunately. Uh, lastly, uh, so both uh, Trump administration and Biden administration announced it as a, a genocide uh, because we have been giving enough evidence, proofs, and reports uh, to the world. Uh, US, uh, passed two bills, Uyghur Human Rights Policy Act and Uyghur Forced Labor Bill, Forced Labor Protection Act. Uh, many European countries, uh, nine of them, followed uh, the suit of U.S. and they also declared as genocide and crimes against humanity. And most recent report by UN also clearly said that it constitutes um, crimes against humanity. 
Now, the last part, what can we do as, you know, a community member? First thing is raise awareness, spread the word, tell your neighbors, tell your friends, tell your, if you're in the church, tell your, you know, people there. If you're in the mosque, share with your friends uh, about what's going on. You, now you know, you cannot say, I didn't know about it. Uh, best thing is to raise awareness and share this knowledge because this is the truth. I also support Uyghur uh, diaspora organization, sign up, uh, go to their events, um, donate if you can, you know, the financial, we, they're all under sourced, uh, they don't have enough resources. Uh, contact your Congress members to advocate for bills on Uyghurs. Uh, to tell your Congress members that you support and you want your Congress members to support Uyghurs, uh, Uyghurs bill. Uh, write UN to pass a resolution. And last thing is don't buy made in China product. Uh, if I'm sorry if I bore you, but those are the truths that we're dealing with every day.